I had a score to settle with a certain fish man that tried to trap and kill me and Dean, but I was having trouble coming up with how to get my revenge. No matter what I do or how hard I train, any aquatic creature will always have the upper hand. Until I figure out how to breathe underwater and move as fast as they can, I will always be stuck with limited options on how to catch and kill them. They know this, and getting one of them out of the water to fight you on land is damn near impossible. Every method for catching a fish man or any other aquatic monster will always boil down to some form of fishing. Monster hunters are not entirely without their own set of tricks, though. We don't just show up with guns blazing every time. It most likely the, is the best solution, but not always. I could have built a new trap and wait for who knows how long. The traps that had been set up around the lake for the last hundred years had yielded nothing but superstitions and frustration. I could have tried to dive the lake and hunt for it, but most likely it would kill or drown me or just hide until I had to resurface. It's obviously pretty good at hide and seek. I could take a nectar, one made from the blood of an aquatic monster, but that would definitely level the playing field, but they're really hard to come by and way out of my price range. After all my debating and decision making, I ended up right back where I started. I was going to have to fish for the fish man. I needed a second opinion and decided to go visit my friend Twitch. He's a machinist. The machinists are a special faction of the monster hunting world. They make any kind of specialty weapon or any piece of gear that a hunter could possibly need to get their job done. If anyone would have a better idea on how to catch the fish man, it would be a machinist. We can build a giant fishing rig and reel it into a cage or something similar, was the best answer Twitch had for me. I should have expected that. What, like a giant fishing rod mixed with a giant crab trap, I asked him. Pretty much. Okay, fair enough, I said. He asked me what I was hunting specifically, and I filled him in on the details of my run-in with the fish man at the cove. I never got a good look at him, but I did recognize his screech, and all fishmen are descended from the same progenitor in the ocean. The ones you find in lakes didn't grow there originally. They all got trapped in the lakes as the oceans receded over time. We used what we knew of fishmen and attempted to build the best trap we could think of. The name of the game was Overkill. Put every single biddly bop and doodad that makes the claim to attract fish. We had lights and things that moved and wriggled and all types of bait. The lab smelled to high heaven. It was like working inside a whale's stomach. Twitch even had these little squid-like creatures that apparently are some kind of delicacy for fishmen. Apparently it's like catnip to them. The squid creatures let out a squeal under stress that can be heard underwater. It can be heard for miles on end. Being bait is a pretty stressful experience, so hopefully it would squeal and attract our target. Once the fish man took the bait and was hooked to the line, it would be reeled in by a winch all the way back to the surface and into the back of a van we had designed to be a cage. The doors would slam and simultaneously jets of cold air would freeze him in a matter of seconds. Twitch wanted to keep the fish man alive. Well, not necessarily alive, but intact. Twitch wanted the heart of the creature so he could turn it into a heartstone. I myself had never gotten into heartstone hunting. It's incredibly difficult to take a creature intact. I had enough trouble when I was allowed to blow them to smithereens. Who knows how I would fare if I had to be gentle with them. If you're a heartstone hunter, then you will definitely need a machinist, and almost every machinist I've ever met was obsessed with the idea of heartstones. Twitch was doing all the work for free though, so who was I to argue terms with him? The following night after we had finished building our trap, we went back to the same cove where Dean and I had the run-in with the creature. We rode out past the cove to the deeper water and placed the line with all the bits and bobs and bait it could handle. The van was up on the bank, anchored into the ground, and Twitch was manning the winch, ready to reel it in as soon as we had something hooked. I donned a wetsuit and waded out into the cove. The water was freezing. Hey, wait! I heard Twitch stop me before I got too far out. When I turned around to see what he had to tell me, he splashed me with a thick, stench-filled bucket of something. What the? What is this? I was shocked and on the verge of puking. It's that squid thing's blood. It should help bring him in, like chum. I'm gonna be sick. 
If this doesn't work, I'm totally rolling around in the seats of your car covered in this. You have to ride in the van too, he said. Shut up. I turned around and waded farther into the water up to my waist. I stood there patiently for an hour or two, just staring out across the dark lake. I couldn't see where the end of the line was, but I imagined it was right out in front of me somewhere. I was standing next to the part of the line that led back into the van, and I occasionally tugged on it, not really for any reason, just to have something to do. Quit tugging on the line, I heard Twitch yell out at me. Fine. I was getting incredibly bored, and I couldn't feel the lower half of my body anymore. I was about to get out and warm up a little when the line tugged. Adrenaline shot through my body and the two of us perked up staring at the line for confirmation. It tugged and jerked again. Then it started pulling out at top speed. The line whizzed as it unraveled and the fishman took the bait out farther into the lake. Hit it! Twitch hit the switch, stopping the line in its tracks and then just as fast as it went out, it started reeling back in. I could hear the motor was working fairly hard to reel him in. I wondered how strong the fish mine might actually be. I did have a tendency to either under or overestimate monsters. I had an idea and started running out of the water towards the van, trying not to get in the way of the line. I climbed up the bank and up the tire of the van, reaching onto the roof, producing a gigantic ten-foot sword I had secretly stored away when Twitch wasn't looking. What in the world is that? Was that up there the whole time? he asked. It's a Templar sword. It's going to be like at the batting cages, I told him. Wait, 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 wait. You can't chop him up. I need his heart intact. I won't. I quickly waded out into the cove and took up a position right next to the line, lining up for the fish man to get yanked into my strike zone. Can you even swing that? Twitch yelled. I only have to swing it once. I raised my sword and dug in my feet. Here it comes, Twitch warned. I saw the shadow as the line got to the end. It was coming in faster than I had expected, and in a handful of seconds the fishman was right out in front of me. It jumped out of the shallow water, lunging at me, as the line yanked him towards the bank. Water splashed everywhere, and I swung with my eyes closed, trying to avoid the water and blood. My timing was incredibly off, though, and I missed the fishman completely, slamming my sword into the soft lake bed in front of me. The line pulled the fish man into the back of the van and the door slammed shut. A loud hiss could be heard as the freezing jets turned on. The van was shaking and rocking as the creature screeched and fought for a minute before freezing. Twitch was on the bank laughing at my incompetence with the sword. Good thing you suck at baseball, he teased. I was coming up with something clever to come back with when a screech came rolling across the lake. We looked at each other and then at the van, then back out at the lake. It wasn't coming from the van. Then another screech, and another, all at the same time. There had to be five or six more creatures out there in the lake. Okay, time to go, I said, hauling myself out of the water doing the high knees run that people do when being chased by a big wave, or in my case, a gang of creatures. We both quickly grabbed any gear that was out and packed it along with ourselves into the van, taking off back to the road and towards the lab. I feel dumb, but I honestly hadn't even thought of the possibility of there being more than one of them out there in the lake. This made the whole situation way more complicated. I was worried that maybe I'd kicked a hornet's nest I should have just left alone. Only time would tell, but I couldn't help but shake the feeling that this lake and the creatures in it were about to become a bigger problem in my life from that point on.